Hello friends, how are you? I hope you are fine, taking proper precaution in the outburst of coronavirus, staying at home, studying well. So in the previous videos, we have discussed about the summer air ventilation system, the heat load calculation, different psychrometric processes, etc. In this video, we will start unit number 6 of your syllabus, the part 1 air distribution system so the content of the today's video are as follows first we will learn the typical air distribution system in short then we will discuss the classification of the duct then we will go for the duct materials then we will discuss the design consideration for the duct with special attention on aspect ratio of the ducts so let us begin this is the layout of typical air distribution system the most important part of the system is air conditioning apparatus which is nothing but the cooling coil or evaporator coil of vapor compression system or vapor absorption cycle it cools and humidifies dehumidifies the air in case of summer air conditioning system and the next component which is fan circulates this air from the AC apparatus to the room. Different types of fans are used. The most commonly used fan is centrifugal fan which is also called as radial fan. It is used because of its quiet and energy efficient operation especially at high pressure. If the quantity of the air is to be handled is very huge then in that case Axial fans are also used for industrial applications. The next component of the system is the supply duct which carries the air from AC apparatus to the room and this return duct recirculates this air back to the AC apparatus. There is one more duct which is called as fresh air duct which takes in the outside air for ventilation purpose. Dampers are also provided at different locations as seen in this figure. The function of the damper is to regulate the air flow and also to redirect the air flow as per the desired direction. Filters are also located inside this unit. The function of the filter is to remove the contamination of the air and make and purify the air so that the room will get fresh and purified air. The combination of these components, AC apparatus, filter and fan as shown by this dotted line. It is called as air handling unit. So this is the brief discussion about the typical air distribution system. Let us see the classification of the ducts. First basis of classification of the duct is on the type of air handled so as per this type uh, classification there are three types of the ducts supply air duct return air duct and fresh air duct as we have seen in the previous diagram supply air duct carries the air from air handling unit to the room return air duct recirculates the air from the room to the air handling unit back and the fresh air duct supplies the outside air in certain percentage to the air handling unit. Next classification is as per the cross section. So if the cross section of the duct is circular, it is called as round duct. If it is rectangular, it is called as rectangular duct. And if the cross section is square, the duct is called as square duct. Let us have a look at the pictures of the ducts. So this is the round duct. This one is a main duct and these are the branches like this and this one the rectangular duct this is main duct and these are the branches which carries the conditioned air to different locations. The third classification is as per the static pressure inside the duct. So the system is divided into three classes low pressure system medium pressure system 
and high pressure system. In low pressure duct system, the velocity of the air is limited to 600 minutes per meter per minute and the static pressure is up to 50 mm of water column. In medium pressure system, the velocity is again limited to 600 meters per minute and the static pressure is up to 150 mm of water column. Whereas in high pressure system, the velocity is greater than 600 minute per meter per minute and the static pressure ranges from 150 to 250 mm of water column. These all pressures are gauge pressures means above atmospheric pressure. Most of the systems are low pressure systems because of their low cost of construction and simplicity. Whereas the medium pressure and high pressure systems are used to meet the space restrictions but they are expensive in construction. The high pressure system occupies less space. The dimensions of the duct are also small but the thickness of the duct material used is more as compared to low pressure system in order to sustain high pressure and that's why the cost and the weight is high. Now let us have a look at uh, the duct materials quickly. The most commonly used duct material is galvanized iron sheet metal which is used commonly because of its low cost. Galvanized iron sheet is nothing but iron sheet coated with zinc for protecting it from rusting. Different gauges of this galvanized iron sheet are used. The range of the gauges is from 16 to 26. Higher the pressure, lower is the gauge number because lower is the gauge number, more is the thickness of the sheet metal as we already know. Aluminium sheets can also be used to take the advantage of their lighter weight and resistance to moisture without any coating. But they are costlier as compared to GI sheets. Some other duct materials are like cement asbestos which are used in underground distribution because of their high strength and fiberglass which is used for low velocity applications where there is special requirement of reducing the rate of heat transfer and reducing the noise also. As the fiberglass is bad conductor of heat, the heat loss or heat gain across the system is limited and they also absorb the noise. Now we will discuss in detail the air de duct design considerations. So while designing the air distribution system, following considerations are there. First consideration is that the duct passages should be as straight as possible because we have to minimize the friction losses and the bending losses also that will result in minimum fan power and it will also save the material cost and space also. If more bends are there inside the duct, the bending losses or the pressure losses due to bending increases which increase the fan power. But it is not possible always to have straight ducts. You have to provide the bends. So while providing the bends, this precaution should be taken that the radius of the bends should be as long as possible and as smooth as possible. So here in this picture, different types of bends are shown. This is sharp angle bend where you can see the eddies are formed over here. So due to this eddies, the pressure drop across the bend increases and that's why the fan power also increases. In this bend, the outer con corner is round but the inner corner is still sharp. So again eddies are formed over here which increases the pressure drop. And this is the rounded corner duct with small radius and this one is the rounded corner duct with large radius. If it is inevitable to use sharp angles then this kind of splitters or turning vanes 
are installed inside the bend itself. So this turning vents prevent the eddy formation and makes the flow of the air smooth. So such a turning vents are also used in the curved or rounded corners. The important design parameter for the vents is nothing but the radius ratio. So it is the ratio of the radius of the bend to the width of the bend. So this is the ratio of radius of the bend to the width of the bend. A radius ratio of 1.5 is considered good for minimum bending losses. Next design consideration is the air velocity. Now, the air velocity inside the duct should be as less as possible because higher is the air velocity, more are the friction losses. And if friction losses are more, to overcome those losses, the fan has to provide more power. Also, if the velocities are higher, the noise level is also high. Sometimes, we have to connect two ducts together, one of smaller diameter and the other of larger diameter. So in that case, such a type of sudden contractions and sudden expansions should be avoided. If there is sudden contraction, a large duct is connected to small duct, then the eddies are formed over here, which increases the pressure loss and puts the pressure on the fan. In case of sudden expansion also, the eddies are formed over here, the bending the friction losses increase and the fan power is to be increased. So to avoid this sudden contraction or sudden expansion, this trans transformation joints are used as shown in this figure. So this is the large duct, this is the small duct and this is the transformation joint which is having a certain slope with angle C. So it is a good practice to have the angle about 10 to 20 degree for minimum losses inside the transformation piece. If the angle is greater than 20 degree, considerable pressure loss may also take place inside the transformation piece also. Next design consideration is regarding the material. The surface finish of the material should be good. That means the surface should be smooth. And this is one of the reasons why the GI or aluminum sheets are preferred for the construction of ducts. So smooth surface reduces the friction losses and hence the fan power also reduces. Next consideration is aspect ratio. We will discuss this aspect ratio in the next slide in detail. So it should be less than 4 as to 1 for rectangular duct. And the last consideration is the provision of dampers. So we have seen in the diagram that the dampers are provided for regulating the air flow and to direct the air flow also. So they also provide the function of balancing the system, pressure balancing of the entire air conditioning system. Now, let us have a look at this diagram. This is a rectangular duct. This is the longer side of the rectangular duct and this is the short side of the rectangular duct. So the aspect ratio is defined as the ratio of the length of long side to the short side, long side to the short side of the rectangular duct. So as per this diagram, aspect ratio is A upon B. Now if this aspect ratio is very high, what will happen? If the aspect ratio is higher, then the metal surface, this metal surface, for the same cross section area per unit length increases. So more aspect ratio means more metal surface for the same cross section area per unit length. Means for the same flow rate, you have to provide more metal surface. So obviously, if the surface area is more, the heat transfer, 
heat loss or heat gain will also increase in addition to this the cost of the construction of the duct also increases and due to these two reasons the aspect ratio of the duct should be as small as possible so less aspect ratio is nothing but more energy efficiency because less aspect ratio means less heat transfer across the duct so it is said that the rectangular duct should be as square as possible means the aspect ratio should be as small as possible the maximum aspect ratio we can provide is 4s to 1 as a rule of thumb because beyond this 4s to 1 the heat transfer rate considerably increases and the cost of construction also increases and the friction losses also increases the most ideal shaped shape for duct is circular duct the circular duct is considered as most ideal shape because it gives the minimum surface area for the given cross section per unit length but circular ducts are difficult for fabrication as well as installation that's why they are not much preferred we go for rectangular duct with minimum aspect ratio always so that's all from today's video in the next video we will study the calculation of the design parameters of the duct system if you have any doubt you can contact me on this email id which i have provided here thank you for listening the lecture all the best